This morning, Monday, October 26th, the Esports Entertainment Group, which trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker GMBL, announced an agreement to acquire Helix Esports and GG Circuit for $43 million. With me today are Grant Johnson, CEO of Entertainment Esports Group, Ed Murphy Vanderveld, co-founder of Helix Esports and chairman of GG Circuit. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today. Glad to be Good here. Morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning. So uh, let's just dive um, right into it. Grant, if I could ask you, uh, you know, especially everything going on with the coronavirus pandemic, um, it may seem to some like a, a dangerous time to make such a large and transformative acquisition, but why did you think now was the time to to go after Helix and GG Circuit? Well, in general, it is a, a time of time, but there's a lot of unsettled elements in the economy, of course. But, you know, in esports, it's a time of growth because, it, well, there is uncertainty with uh, a lot of the land-based uh, pieces here. Uh, the online infrastructure is, is increasing. And we all know that the the COVID uh, pandemic is eventually going to end. Uh, you know, clearly uh, that there are vaccines being developed. And when they do, we need to be positioned to take advantage of that uh, as the people flood back into uh, the, the land-based centers as well. So it's the time actually is perfect for us. You know, it's it, it, for us, we see this as uh, an opportunity to get ourselves uh, positioned to be ready for that uh, traffic back into the helix centers, et cetera. Uh, but in terms of our, our EGL, as you saw from recent announcements, uh, the sports teams are actually aggressively pursuing online uh, solutions. And the helix and GG circuit elements here are going to be logical extensions of those those online activities where we're taking um, uh, getting our agreements in place now. So I, I don't see it as anything other than a perfect time. Yeah, and uh, and, and Murphy, we've certainly spoken um, before about uh, sort of the, the growth that we're seeing in esports. So you're obviously on the ground floor, um, you know, with the, with the Helix locations. I, I've been out to the one in North Bergen. Can you talk at all about the dynamics that you've been seeing um, on the gaming front, especially because we do know that um, with an inability to travel and stuff like that, people are moving to gaming, whether it be um, for online competition or social aspects. So any, anything you're seeing? Yeah, I, I, you know, just to mirror what Grant said, there's a really interesting dynamic going on. Obviously, center-based uh, esports has been affected by COVID, uh, not just here in the States, but across the globe. That said, we think there's a big pent up demand by uh, gamers to get back out of their bedrooms and basements. Uh, we think we've developed the infrastructure. Uh, we've developed the partnerships. And the really interesting thing coming out of this post COVID is from a real estate perspective, situations and opportunities that were probably too risky for us from a business risk management perspective, uh, you know, i.e. leases being too expensive with big commercial properties, uh, we're now being sought by those exact properties to bring in an experiential esports uh, entertainment piece of it. And a very natural fit was what Grant and his team are doing. It's, it's, it's really a, uh, a, going to be a great partnership. So let's um, dig into a little bit more of that kind of the, the transition of the company. So Grant, if I could go back to you, prior to this acquisition, you had a, a three pillar strategy, right? You had um, entertainment and infrastructure, you had the wagering, and then you also had traditional sports betting and you operated under EGL, uh, Phi.gg, Agro and Sport Nation. Um, can you talk about sort of what uh, what the business plan was there and then how it's transforming with the acquisition of these assets? Sure. Uh, the business plan, as you say, with our, our three pillar approach, uh, has been to, you know, pursue esports online. You know, the tournament play, the EGL, as you can see the, the logos here and uh, the recent announcements and signing with um, the Kings and the Galaxy. So we've been Pursuing that aggressively, of course, uh, since we did our listing in April, uh, we made it crystal clear in our uh, registration documents that we were going to be pursuing a path of rapid growth, uh, both through traditional marketing of our buy platform and uh, then, of course, through acquisition. 
and you know acquiring Argyle and the Sports Nation EGL. This was these all were components of that. You know, getting those tier one licenses. We now have uh, Ireland. England, our UKGC, Malta. We made our application in New Jersey. We've been rolling out uh, Vi and uh, uh, out of New Jersey Q1 next year. And so as we've been going through this process, this is not a, a we haven't taken a change in direction where we have essentially have now, you know, we've acquired another element that fits with our, with our plan. EGL was the tournament, Vi was the gambling. Uh, Sports Nation brought some more gambling expertise, but additional licenses to market into. And now with this acquisition with Helix GG Circuit, we now can take the online and we have a solution you know, on the ground as well and infrastructure because GG Circuit's obviously the infrastructure software and Helix has the expertise in working with physical plants. So if, if it expands our, our opportunity radically because now – if you think of the casino industry, who are all trying to figure out how do they get into the esport market segment uh, in the sector, they've been trying to figure this whole piece out, and now we're a turnkey partner for them. Uh, if you look at the big sports uh, stadiums, we're already partnering up with the big sporting teams. We have relationships with Hair Splitzer in New Jersey. We have a relationship with AEG in, in LA. Uh, now with again with Murphy and his team. We have the component that not only can we do the online element for them, but we can bring that into the stadiums as well with the expertise that um, you know Murphy's team brings in, in in terms of transition from online into the physical plants. And these things don't you can't snap your fingers happen overnight. So the positioning to go back to your first question on timing, we want to be perfect you know through the acquisition, through the audit, et cetera. And when the fans are flooding back into these facilities, we would have already started this process. So, you know, that that's why this acquisition makes sense. Murphy and I have been talking about this for several months now. So it takes quite a while to put something like this together. And there's still more work to be done, but we are well underway now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and since you do mention a, a turnkey solution, and obviously I think a lot of people don't realize just how hard it is to build out a land center where you can have competitive gaming, where everything has to be, um, you know, exactly the same from the hardware to the internet speeds to, uh, the, you know, the computers that you're on, stuff like that. Um, Murphy, so I think I think I have an idea of um, what Helix is in terms of the, the physical locations, but can you maybe talk a little bit more about GG Circuit? Um, we, we've spoken about it in the past, but to me, that kind of seems like the secret sauce. So can you give a little bit more information on that, on that asset? Yeah, you know, GG Circuit as a, uh, a land-based um, operating system for esports is the largest in North America for sure, one of the largest globally, um, grown like a weed in the last couple of years. And as we started looking to generate more capital towards that part of the business, we knew that we needed to find the right partner. Uh, but GG Circuit allows us to connect all these different facilities, all these different gamers. Uh, we even added, we, we have an at-home product now, and uh, Zach Johnson and Chris McGee and his team have done an unbelievable job of navigating the shoals of COVID. And as we develop these partnerships and come to the back end of it, uh, we are gonna have the infrastructure that nobody else has to build out uh, a robust network of gaming centers. And so is this, this is also the software that makes it so that I can go to the, the center in New Jersey and, com and compete against someone in Boston, Massachusetts and know that, um, that we are basically on an even, even keel, which is obviously going to be incredibly important um, once money starts coming into the equation, which, which would be the, the, the next stage, I guess. This is sort of yeah, this happen. is going to be the interesting, yeah, this is going to be the interesting part because there's a lot of. Uh, disparities between performance from software to bandwidth to the PCs themselves. And what we've done at Helix, along with GG Circuit and our data analytics party, uh, uh, Team Genji, we've built that infrastructure for amateurs to play against each other, um, professionals as well. But we're really focused on the, the amateur market because we want to go after everybody, not just the best players. So we've developed a peer-to-peer uh, tournament system. We've developed a peer-to-peer -peer handicap system. We've developed a peer-to-peer -peer wagering system that allows people, like they would in golf um, on any given Saturday or Sunday, on public courses, private courses in the all over the world, 
we're creating that same experience um, in a gaming center. So Grant, I, and uh, I think Mur Murphy just kind of touched on it, but Grant, um, you were mentioning, uh, you know, the data, the analytics, everything that goes in. Um, and, you know, anyone who has watched traditional sports over the years, we've seen the, the money ball come into uh, come into it so much. Um, and obviously, uh, being on a, a computer platform allows for so much data and analytics. Can you maybe talk to what how um, Genji, what Genji brings uh, to the deal? I know they're working with NBA uh, 2K, so they've obviously got a lot of background in that. Yeah, exactly. Well, Genji, William and his team, they have close relationships with several of the publishers in the leagues, as you already mentioned, the 2K League. Uh, but if you if you also then expand out to the greater picture here, we've got you know the tournament play online, we've got gambling online, esports gambling, you got the Helix centers, you have the the publishers. So you start to get this massive amounts of data coming in. And one of the things that's been lacking in, in esports is, of course, getting accurate data and scouting reports. And now by coordinating everything that, you know, GG Circuit, Helix, Vi, EGL is doing, we have, we have the ability, and, and with the publishers, of course, with Genji's already doing, we have the ability to generate scouting reports, which would be a valuable uh, asset for all the teams, all the leagues, all the publishers to have. That's, that'll be a product we'll be able to sell. Uh, getting accurate and tighter lines. You know, this has been a big concern of the casinos having these accurate lines. So, this component of Genji and the analytics will allow uh, you know more offering and tighter lines for the casinos, the sports books. Certainly on our site, we will absolutely have the tightest lines available uh, once we've uh, got everything functioning fully by the end of the, by the end of this calendar year. And you know, this again to Murphy's point. You know, by bringing the two teams together, we really have the only offering of its kind in the world, period. I mean, the online, the tournament play, you look at EGL, they have 350,000 people who use that pl platform. There's thousands on the Vi platform. You know, Sports Nation has, you know, three, has 100,000 people that play an awful lot of, you know, uh, FIFA, 2K, Madden, et cetera. And then, you know, GG Circuit has 1.9 million plus users. Uh, the Helix centers have over 6,000 unique users every month. And so gathering all that data, nobody else is going to be able to do that. And so how does all of this uh, come together and play into the, um, the, ne the next piece of it, which would be land tool? I mean, is that more so uh, large scale? Um, you know, uh, are we talking sports betting on like huge competitions like Overwatch? Or is that more so where I can, you know, walk into a Helix location and start person-to-person um, -person wagering, sort of the, the golf course, so to speak. Actually, I'm gonna let Murphy take this one. That's one of his babies. <laughs> yeah, so Zev, it's a, it's a great question. And I think this is one of the visions that uh, led us to, you know, the initial conversations with, with uh, Esports Entertainment Group because we shared uh, a view of where the world was going. And, and we look at traditional sports and esports uh, becoming much more uh, of a partnership and traditional sports athletes and esports athletes becoming synonymous. And so they're looking for a competition. Um, the the peer-to-peer -peer wagering market is a multi-billion dollar market uh, that's uh, uh, online, in the shadows, unregulated. Uh, it's a major concern for both state regulators and, uh, and for publishers, for uh, primarily people cheating, underage kids playing. And what we've done is built the infrastructure to create that same competition and, and tournament play and peer-to-peer -peer in a regulated environment where parents, state regulators, publishers all know that and can rest assured that, that all the different uh, gambling regulations are being uh, followed and and closely monitored. Now, on a bigger scale, we think it, as we go after the very same demographic that a lot of the casinos are going after in terms of millennials and that generation of gamers, the real opportunity is, and our belief is that we're going to have PCs and gaming stations replace slot machines and the like on casino floors in the not too distant future. And we are going to have scenarios where 
not only can you and I play against each other and, you know, let's say wager $10 on a, on a, on a match where, you know, you're better than I am and you give me uh, a handicap of a couple of, you know, w- you know, whatever the game uh, indicates, but it'll give Grant the ability to wager on us without us even knowing. So we'll be able to have different events and, and kind of a, a, a dynamic virtual sports book right in their own casino, you know, ultimately once the regulators and publishers get comfortable, you know, you can do stuff like this online, but there is a, uh, a, a standard that has to be created. And we believe that with esports entertainment, um, that we're, that we've set that standard and are just going to keep on moving that standard forward. Yeah. And abs- it absolutely sounds to me like you guys have, um, pretty much all the angles, uh, of the industry covered. And I guess the, the last thing, um, that I would ask, cause I think some may be wondering is, would you consider this to be complementary to say like an actual esports league like an overwatch or to do all of these pieces kind of go in is this something that i guess activision for example with the overwatch league would even want to leverage the data the analytics as they build out their own leagues seeing as you guys are providing all the data you do have um murphy i know we've spoken about with 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 helix is kind of like a feeder system like the, I think the one thing that you don't so much have in esports that you have in traditional sports is farm teams for example um do you see this as also acting in uh, that complementary fashion to, you know, the Overwatch leagues, the League of Legends leagues, things like that? Yeah, absolutely. We've set up and and we've made a couple of announcements um, within our academy system that we've set up with one. Um, our first one was with the base, which is a not-for-profit uh, sports organization in downtown Boston. We just announced that we are uh, opening academy location in Exeter, New Hampshire, uh, and in partnership with Spartans Hockey, uh, and that will roll out for to a lot of different locations. Uh, but in terms of the publishers, here's the really interesting way this we see this developing. And one of my sons said it best: it's like going to a UFC or a prize fight, where during the intermissions you can actually fight against the person next to you. And I don't mean literally punching <laughs> and kicking somebody, but getting into an esports competition live while the, the the main stage the main fight's going on if you have this infrastructure built around event venues you can have the spectators participate in the same event so you could have a Fortnite or an overwatch match going on a, a tiered fight card if you will and then between the matches people go off and and can play on the periphery of that venue can play against each other can play for fun can play for cash can play you know, to to be seen and 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 try to get into a feeder system for some of these professional leagues. Well, if I I'd just like to add to that, if if I, if I could, <clears throat> for sure, for the longevity of of esports and, and as this continues to develop, clearly the multi billion dollar sports empires are pouring tens of millions of dollars into esports. Uh, you, you know, you can look at the Kraft family, you can look Cuban, Jerry Jones. Air Splitzer, AEG, they're all investing heavy in esports because esports is, it's a natural fit. All those uh, pro athletes, well, they're in their bubble. You can believe they've got their gaming rigs with them. They've got their consoles with them. They, they play a lot of video games. I can say in our discussion with the Kings organization, the Galaxy organization, they intend to have their players playing against the amateurs. And some of the discussion has been they could use these tournaments to help recruit future you know people that they would have on their on their pro teams uh so any pro league system needs a healthy feeder system and so if you combine what gg circuit has and helix has and genji has uh it it will help feed that that system the scouting reports etc it's all going to be integral as, as this whole industry matures and we're with this acquisition we are absolutely the best positioned yeah, it is. It is very exciting, and I can say uh, personally, you know, anyone who's who's seen me talk on the street before knows um, I lo- I love gaming. I've definitely been very interested in esports growth, and I can confidently say this is kind of uh, the first the first company I've seen where you can actually get real um, sort of like a pure play on esports. We have tried for action alerts um, to get exposure to esports, but there's always you know it's tied to a publisher in some way, and that's obviously um, a hit based industry. Um, but th- this is very exciting and obviously um, a massively growing industry for those that don't know. Um, 
you know, the viewership on here, I think is, is uh, at this point above tr uh, most traditional sports, NBA finals, things like that, uh, you know, when you compare it to the League of Legends. Um, so yeah, I, I, I definitely um, am excited to, to, to see where it goes from here. For anyone who is interested, again, the ticker is GMBL on the NASDAQ. Uh, it's entertainment, uh, eSports Entertainment Group, excuse me. Uh, Murphy, Grant, thank you so much for joining us today.